Welcome to Amy Learns to Cook. I'm Eric, Amy's husband, and today we got a surprise for you. One of my best friends has gotten some mail order today. I've never seen these before, but apparently I'm about to open a box of 30 pounds of baby back bison ribs. Now you might be thinking, bison? Well, bison is cool. You get the best worlds. You get a beefy taste, I think, but with no fat. Apparently, bison is really good for you in the sense that it's lean, has a tenth of the fat of beef, and it doesn't have any calories. So you can eat a whole rack and go back and eat another rack. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart. We're gonna prep them. I got my smoker all fired up, and we're gonna smoke the heck out of these things. So now we're unpackaging this uh, bison uh, baby back ribs. This almost reminds me of a story when I was doing a practice cook for an upcoming comp and I asked a few friends at work, um, hey, I got some spare room on my smoker. You want to give me something? They showed up with five slabs of ribs and three whole chickens. I didn't have any room for my own cooking. So when I asked my friend that I've got a little bit of room, he shows up with 30 pounds of ribs. So luckily, we can do this. So now that we got these ribs out of the box we need to get the package open and looks like it's double bagged at this point i'm going to go ahead and rip open this bag we've already done half the ribs so this is going to show you what we're going to do here Pull the ribs one at a time out of the bag, rinse them off, remove any shipping paper that they seem to put everywhere. And I'm going to put it into this full pan over here. All right, that looks good. And what we're going to do for weight purposes, since we got about 30 pounds of bones here, we're going to go ahead and just take it out to the smoker using two of these pans instead of one. I think that can tolerate it. Yay and yay. And I think that'll work. Okay, we're gonna go out to the smoker and we'll put these on. Hi, we have just put on the rub on the bison baby back ribs and we're getting ready to put them in the smoker. The smoker I normally like to do at around 300 degrees and for these it would take about three hours to do it. Uh, if the temperature is a little bit lower, like say 250, then it might take four hours to do them. And if it's slower yet, like down to 225, it might take five or six hours. It just depends upon the meat, but that's kind of a guideline. Um, I know you haven't seen the smoker before, so this is going to be the firebox, just to let you know. This is a backwood smoker. It's known as a fat boy. Um, it's a little claim to fame is it's been used in the uh, Kansas City Barbecue Society and also in Memphis and May competitions where somebody can cook a full uh, competition of chicken, uh, brisket, pork spare ribs, uh, pulled pork or just the whole pork shoulder all in one thing. You don't need anything else. It all fits in there. Um, I like it for the ease of uh, convenience of how to cook it. On the inside, this is where all the smoking happens. We have a five gallon water pan that provides for the indirect cooking. So that way we don't have flare ups or anything else with drippings, it all goes into the pan. We have uh, four racks here that can handle uh, three to four full size slabs. These slabs are a little on the small side. I think they already cut them in half. So 
it won't take that many shelves to get them on here. And um, with that, we're going to go ahead and put them on right now. The, um, so we got one, two, and fit three. We'll go with that for starters. We've got four on that. One of the things you want to be careful of is not putting your meat too close together because you want to actually cook. And if meat is touching meat, it won't cook. And the other thing is you want smoke to circulate. Um, in fact, now that I'm paying attention here, we're going to put these all actually bone side down, or excuse me, meat side down. And need to check on that here. Actually, put it like that, maybe. So what's going to happen by putting it meat side down, the back of the bones are going to puddle with juices. And then if you're careful, those juices will get redistributed back into the meat. And uh, we'll show more on that later. With the going the other way, if you have the membrane or the back side down, you're losing those juices and it just won't be as tasty. And after all, we're doing this for taste, aren't we? So if you do this on a gas grill or even in your oven, you're going to have the basic same principles involved. Uh, obviously with gas, you won't have as much smoke, but you can use uh, different methods where you put in um, either water-soaked wood chips that allow you to uh, produce smoke by either using a drawer or putting in foil wood chips near the burner so that way it produces heat and then the wood chip will give off smoke before it self-destructs. And we're going to leave that in there just long enough for the um, sauce to set, which can be maybe 5-10 minutes, uh, 15 minutes at the longest. Uh, generally, if your temperature is high, um, say you're doing 250, 300, 350, no matter what, what you're cooking on, whether it's an oven, gas grill, or even a smoker of some sorts, you run the risk of your sauce burning. And because it's sugar based, there's a lot of sugar, even tomato in it, but you're going to have issues. So that's why a lot of times when you cook, you put the sauce on near the time that you think your meat is done. That way you leave it on for a short time. Um, we're leaving it on just long enough for it to set, so that way it's not all runny coming off. It'll look a little different. You'll see what I'm talking about when we pull it out. Hi, we are back now. Um, <laughs> I keep saying that because we go inside, outside. But here, we've already have cooked the bison ribs, and we've sauced them, and then we let them cook for about another, looks like about 15 minutes, just so they can kind of set. So our total cook time actually was a little over two hours, uh, because these bones are so lean that they cook incredible, plus I cooked them a little hotter. My goal was 300, the smoker, decided it wanted to do 325 on me. So no matter how you cook yours, just watch the temps and the times will vary based on the tenderness of the meat, not a designated time schedule like we're cooking a cake or cookies or something like that. So that's one takeaway from here. If I would have cooked it for a full three hours, we'd be eating charcoal. I might as well just feed the fire with these if there's anything left. So what we're gonna do here, um, 
I'm pretty much, these bones are actually on loan, if you didn't know that already. A friend of mine loaned them to our cooking show, so that way we could show you how to cook them, and more or less so he could have them cooked for free. And I'm not doing a good job on this, but I've got plenty of practice on the next ones. We're going to cook, cut these in half, because um, that's the way we're going to eat them. I'm going to eat one in the end here uh, with just uh, one bone. But just to speed up the process, um, we're going to probably eat these things um, several bones at a time. And it doesn't matter how you store them, really. If you're going to eat these things hot off the grill or out of the oven, then cut up each individual bone, have fun, and don't make too much of a mess. If you're going to store them, I recommend that short time storage, um, either use butcher paper or a Ziploc bag freezer. If you're going to throw them in the freezer, fridge, you know, aluminum foil is fine, short term, but just think long term. If you're going to keep these for very long in the freezer, you may need to food saver them. You don't want to see these things go to waste. Um, when you go to reheat something like this, nuking them is what we all do, and that's okay. Preferably, I'd like to see you use aluminum foil and heat them up at, say, 300 to 350 for either an hour and use a little liquid, like take a little apple juice or something, so that way uh, it can kind of steam, it'll braise a little bit, and then that will help it. When your house or office smells like barbecue, you know they're done. And at that point, you can pretty much take them out. I'm going to run out of room on here, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut one off. This one looks tasty enough. Sorry, Gil, you're not getting this bone. And so let's go ahead and see how this thing tastes. Give us a little room here. So hopefully the camera can see. We got a little bit of a smoke ring here on this side. It's a little pink, a little pink there. Then the middle is kind of a gray, which shows that it's cooked. Obviously, if we had pink all the way through, then that would not be smoke ring, but that would mean it's undercooked. So it's definitely cooked. Um, we're going to taste it for tenderness right now. What I like about this is it isn't what I call fall off the bone tender, which is what a lot of people like. Uh, that's actually a bad thing if you're ever doing Kansas City Barbecue Society uh, competition cooks where you just fall off. That's considered overcooked. This, we definitely have teeth marks. Doesn't take much effort at all to chew these. Pull them off. Um, I haven't eaten beef ribs probably since I was a kid. And these are the first ever bison or buffalo ribs I've ever eaten. Um, these are delicious and I'm hoping you're enjoying me eat these and make a mess. If you want to see the recipe for this, go out to www.amylearnsofcook.com and we'll probably also put the recipe on the YouTube video description as well. But these are fantastic.